In early 1983, Motley Crue set out to create an album that would etch their name into the archives of rock history. This endeavor led them to the record plant in Los Angeles, a studio that had witnessed the birth of countless legendary records. Here, under the guidance of producer Tom Warman, known for his work with heavy hitters like Cheap Trick and Ted Nugent, Motley Crue embarked on a rigorous recording process that spanned over several months culminating in the release of Shout at the Devil on September 26, 1983. The band was at a crucial juncture in their career. Their determination to surpass their debut album led to a meticulous and sometimes tumultuous recording process. The studio became a crucible of creativity and conflict fueled by the band's notorious lifestyle and Six's vision of a darker, more theatrical direction for their music. Shout at the Devil represented a bold departure from the raw sounds of their first album featuring a polished yet powerful mix of heavy metal and glam rock. The title track, along with hits like Looks That Kill and Too Young to Fall in Love, showcased the band's maturation in songwriting and musical prowess. The recording sessions, while grueling, were a testament to the band's determination and ambition, with each member contributing to the band's aggressive sound and rebellious result. The album's release solidified their status as heavy metal icons, but it also thrust them into the national spotlight, fueled in part by their electrifying performance at the US Festival in 1983. This event, one of the largest rock festivals of the era, proved to be a pivotal point in the band's career, exposing them to a wider audience and affirming their place on rock and roll's landscape. Shout at the Devil was both a commercial and critical success. Selling over 4 million copies in the United States alone, its provocative themes and imagery coupled with the band's unbashedly decadent lifestyle captivated fans and alarmed critics, cementing Motley Crue's reputation as the bad boys of rock. In retrospect, the making of Shout at the Devil was more than just a recording of an album. It was a defining chapter in Motley Crue's legacy. It was a period marked by relentless work, creative evolution, and the crystallization of the band's iconic image. The record plant sessions were not just about laying down tracks. They were about Motley Crue setting the stage for a decade of decadence in rock music, defining the sound and spirit of an era. In the whirlwind of rock and roll excess that defined the early 1980s, Vince Neil, the charismatic frontman of Motley Crue, found himself at the center of a tragic event that would leave an indelible mark on his life and the band's legacy. On December 8, 1984, Neil was involved in a car accident that resulted in the death of Nicholas Razzle Dingley, the drummer of the Finnish band Hanoi Rocks. The accident occurred in Redondo Beach, California. After Neil and Razzle left a liquor store, Neil, who was driving under the influence, lost control of a sports car, colliding head-on with another vehicle. The impact was devastating. Razzle was pronounced dead at the hospital, while the occupants of the other car suffered serious injuries. Vince Neil miraculously walked away with minor injuries. The incident sent shockwaves through the rock community and led to Neil being charged with vehicular manslaughter and DUI. The legal proceedings concluded with Neil receiving a sentence far lighter than many anticipated. 30 days in jail, five years probation, community service, and a financial restitution to the victims and their families. The outcome sparked a debate about celebrity justice and the consequences of reckless behavior. This tragedy became a pivotal moment in the band's history, underscoring the dark side of fame and the rock and roll lifestyle. It served as a grim reminder of the real world consequences of their actions. Amidst the chaos of touring, recording, and living up to the public's expectations of them as the epitome of rock star excess, the accident and its aftermath would later be reflected in the band's music and memoirs, marking a moment of reflection in their tumultuous careers. Looking for the perfect blend of entertainment and style? Look no further. Introducing CoastlineMall.com, your one-stop destination for DVDs and fashion apparel. Browse our vast collection, from the latest movie releases to the trendiest fashion must-haves. Shop securely and conveniently at CoastlineMall.com, where you can immerse yourself in the raw energy of music and fashion.
Use the promo code CRASH and when you buy one item, you'll get a second item at a whopping 50% off. That's right, buy one, get one at half price. But act fast, because this exclusive offer won't last forever. So head on over to CoastlineMall.com now, and let's get that shopping spree started. Remember, it's CRASH for your exclusive deal. Don't miss out, CoastlineMall.com, where shopping and savings meet in perfect harmony. Happy shopping, everyone!